Chapter 1 Fiona Jefferson paused in sweeping the spot just in front of the front door of the cabin she shared with her father to watch the progress he was making on the house he was building for them. It was spring, and she could hear birds chirping. What a long, hard winter it had been. Now that April had finally arrived, men were plowing fields and birthing calves. Oh, it was a wonderful spring. And she was determined to be married before summer. Not that there were men catching her eye that she wanted to marry, but there had to be someone like her. Who wanted an even dozen children and was looking for a bride. She sighed and closed the door. She was doing spring cleaning that day, and though she'd rather be outside doing anything but cleaning, she knew her role as a woman of the West. She would be able to start her kitchen garden soon, and she would be able to spend all the time she wanted outside then. Supper would be cold sandwiches, because she was too busy cleaning to do much else. The walls needed to be scrubbed and the dirt floor of the cabin needed to be swept. At least she didn't need to scrub floors this time. But there would be a real house by fall for them to winter in. How she hoped she wouldn't still be keeping house for her father in the fall. She knew every man in their little community, and she could think of no one she wanted to marry. Fiona sighed dramatically and got back to work. Tomorrow was Sunday. She'd talk to Emma at church, and perhaps she would be able to help her find a husband. Perhaps Emma could make a project of her. Or really, anyone who would. She'd ask Hannah, Pastor Jed's wife, but she was busy with her baby. No, a married woman with no children would be best to help her. As she continued her chores, she fantasized about what it would be like to be married. She imagined a tall, dark-haired man with brown eyes. Maybe a bit of a beard, but nothing long and scraggly as some of the men in the community had taken to wearing. He would always act like a gentleman. She'd prefer a soft-spoken man so she wouldn't have to fight to get words in edgewise. He would bring her flowers and take her on long buggy rides out to the lake but only after his work for the day was done. They would dance even when there was no music because they would be filled with music at all times. Oh, being married to her perfect husband and having their twelve children would be a joy. Asterisk. At church the following day, Fiona found Emma sitting with her husband, Jared, and her sister-in-law Henri, and brother Roy. Two families had merged twice with Henri marrying Emma's brother, Roy and Emma marrying Henry's brother, Jared. Fiona chose the pew right behind them. Her father usually stood at the back of the church for some reason she would never quite understand. While the men were off visiting with the other men, Fiona pushed her head between Emma and Henri. I wonder if you two ladies could help me with something. Henri turned to her and smiled. We'd be happy to. I want to get married. Before summer. Emma and Henri looked at each other for a moment. Sam. Your brother Sam? Fiona asked. He's so quiet. He's got to be up to something. Henri laughed. He's quiet because Bastion never shuts up. There's no need or opportunity for Sam to say a word. Fiona frowned. Do you really think that's why? Emma nodded. She's right. I've been around the Applebice enough to know she's telling the absolute truth. I've seen Sam open his mouth to speak, but Bastion always says something, so Sam stays quiet. Perhaps I could invite him to supper one time and see how we do together. Better yet, Emma said. Let me invite both of you and Henri and Roy to supper. I've been learning to cook from Henri, and I'd love to show off my skills. Fiona nodded. That would be better. If you invite us both, it looks like you're trying to match us. If I invite him, it looks like I'm setting my cap for him. Exactly, Henri said. She had a hand resting on her baby bump, but there was no indication that Emma was expecting it all. When? Fiona still wasn't sure how she felt about the middle Appleby brother, but she was willing to give him a chance. Tonight? Emma suggested. Before the work week starts and everyone has to get back to their real lives. 
I finished my spring cleaning last night, so I won't be bogged down with work. Well, then tonight we'll all have supper together. Six? Perfect, Fiona said. That'll give me time to get supper on the table for my pa, and then I'll head up the hill. Henri frowned. No, I'll have Sam come for you at quarter till six. Then you won't have to walk up the hill or walk home in the dark. Do you think he'd do it? Henri laughed. If he wants to eat something more than his own cooking, he will. Emma nodded. We take turns cooking for the men, so we'd be able to cut him off easily. Fiona laughed. You are going to force this on him, aren't you? Henri shrugged. I don't consider it forcing. He wants to marry as well. I suppose we'll see what happens then. Fiona was both excited and nervous about spending the evening with Sam, but she would give him a shot. He couldn't be quiet all the time. What should I bring? Emma shook her head. I'll take care of the meal. I could bring dessert? Fiona suggested, wanting to show off her baking skills. She'd always been a whiz in the kitchen. All right, Emma said. Henri, you can make the bread. Henri nodded, and Fiona could see she didn't mind when Emma volunteered her to do things. I'll see you both at six then. Thank you. All three of them stood up then and wandered to the back of the church. I'm excited, Emma said. Henri nodded. Me too. I'm nauseated, Fiona said. She was happy there was a plan, but she just didn't know what to think about Sam Appleby. The other two laughed. It's going to be fine, Henri said. He's my gentlest brother. He brings me sick birds to heal. He used to take them to Ma, but now they come to me. And he checks on them every day until they can fly again. A slow smile crossed Fiona's face. Maybe Sam was the one she was looking for after all. She got into the wagon, beside her pa to head home. While he drove, she said, I've been invited to supper at Emma and Jared Appleby's place. That's nice. Just leave me something I can have, and I don't mind. Her father rarely cared what she did. As long as her chores were done, he didn't care if she languished reading novels all day. Sam Appleby is going to come fetch me. Her father looked at her for a moment, contemplating what she'd said. All the Applebys are good men, but if I wanted to choose a husband for you, it would be Sam. That bastion is too loud for your quiet nature. Fiona smiled. Her father even approved of the match. Perhaps this would go somewhere. As soon as they arrived home, Emma walked to the main Appleby cabin where she knew Sam and Bastion would be eating with their father. Sam, may I talk to you for a moment? she asked. Sam looked confused. Emma wasn't sure the two of them had ever had a conversation without someone else being a part of it. He got up and walked to her. Yup. I'm going to have some people over for supper tonight, and I want you to come. Sam frowned. Why me? Why not you? It's just going to be Henri, Roy, Jared, and me. Oh, and Fiona Jefferson. Sam's eyes widened. Fiona? Yes, and we told her you'd go fetch her at quarter till six. Is that all right? Sam swallowed hard. Yes, I can fetch Miss Jefferson. He'd had his eye on her for a good long while. Maybe having supper with her would help him loosen his tongue enough that he could ask her if she was willing to let him court her. Oh, good. Thank you, Sam. Emma started to turn away, but stopped and looked back at him. If you want to make a good impression on her and her pa, pick her some flowers. There are wildflowers down by the creek. Sam nodded. He would feel self-conscious, but if it gave him a chance to marry Fiona Jefferson, he was more than willing to feel uncomfortable for a moment. Sam went back into the house and sat at the table, eating the supper Emma had made for them. She and Henri had each made supper every other night, but now that Henri was expecting, Emma had taken on the task nightly. 
It was always nice to have a meal that he and Bastian hadn't cooked for themselves. What was that about? Pa asked. Emma wanted to invite me for supper. Bastian looked at Sam, frowning. Just you? Are we supposed to starve? I'm sure Emma will still feed the two of you. Sam worried that he looked too eager about courting Miss Jefferson. Bastian would find out eventually, and Sam would never hear the end of the teasing. That didn't matter right now, though. Now, he was thinking of the beautiful brown-eyed girl he wanted for his own. After their lunch, Paul looked at Bastian. Your turn to clean up, son. Bastian groaned. It was my turn to clean up last night. No, your brother did the dishes last night. It's your turn today, and you know it. Bastian didn't argue again as he started to clear the table. Sam watched his younger, more outspoken brother as he did the dishes. He swore Bastian never stopped talking. If Sam didn't respond, he'd just carry on both sides of the conversation. It was a quirk of his, and Sam was used to it. We need to get more work done on the main house today, Pa said. We're working every other day, so Sundays will have to be about building. I'm so glad there's a sawmill open down by the creek now. It's going to make things a lot easier when it comes to building. Sam nodded. One of the men who had been on the trail with them, Jamie Pruitt, had opened the sawmill, mainly so he could build his wife a home where she could make her dream come true. She wanted to open a boarding house, and though she wouldn't be ready to run it for a year or two, he was building it to her specifications. Sawmill isn't open on Sundays. Pa nodded. That's why I got lumber yesterday. We all need to think ahead living out here in the West, as we do. Just wish someone would open a mercantile. I'm sure someone will, Pa, Bastian called from the basin where he was half-heartedly washing the dishes. And I don't need a house this summer. I can stay in the cabin for another winter, and I bet Sam could too. Sam hoped he was married before fall, but he didn't say anything. Bastian would have too much to say about it. He wasn't sure how he'd managed his whole life with a younger brother like Bastian. They'd lost their ma on the trail, and they all still felt her absence. It hadn't been as bad until Henri married Jared. Then there'd been a decided lack of female company in the house. Henri still made sure the cabin was cleaned once per week, and she seemed happy to do it, but he had no idea how much longer she would be smiling while she slept. Sam. Bastian yelled. What? Sam's mind was still on sweet Fiona. Surely this whole dinner was to help them get to know one another. He hoped she was willing for a quick engagement. Every time he caught sight of her with her raven hair, his whole body tightened. He wasn't sure how long he could hide it from her. Have you listened to a word I said? Sam shrugged. Nope. Bastian looked shocked at his brother's response. Why not? Just thinking. Pa grinned at Sam. With the three of us working one day per week, the house is going to take most of the summer. We'll make it a two-bedroom, so there's room for Bastian if he needs a place. Bastian frowned. I already said I don't mind staying in the cabin for another year. I know, Pa said, but he winked at Sam, who couldn't help but grin. Sam knew his Pa understood the real reason he was going to Emma's for supper, and he was glad he didn't have to explain later. I'm going to go change, and then we'll get to work. Walking to the little cabin he shared with Bastian, Sam looked around for flowers. He wouldn't pick them until right before he went to fetch Fiona, but knowing where they were would help a lot. He spotted a pretty white flower that he didn't know the name of, but he'd certainly pick it and take it to Fiona. He couldn't believe Emma was offering him the perfect solution for his shyness. He'd wanted to court Fiona for a long time, but he had no idea how to approach her. Emma had made it so it wouldn't be so awkward, and he was even going to be able to drive her up the hill and back down to her father. He knew Fiona had lost her ma during the winter. She'd gotten sick and passed away, but it wasn't cholera. The doctor said she had flu that had turned into pneumonia. 
he knew Henri and Emma had both taken food to her. The sad part was they had to wait till spring to bury Mrs. Jefferson. It wasn't the way anyone would want to see a loved one go. When he got to the cabin, he quickly changed into his work clothes, carefully laying out his church clothes, which he would wear for courting that night. Somehow, he felt as if he was heading to his wedding. Of course, he knew he'd have to talk to the woman at least some to get her to agree to marry him. Hopefully without Bastion around, it would be easier. He felt like he'd lucked into the perfect situation. He whispered to himself. I'm going to marry Fiona Jefferson. He just had to convince her that he was right. Chapter 2 Fiona spent the day cooking supper for her pa and preparing a cake for dessert that evening. She didn't change out of her Sunday dress because she knew she wanted to wear it for Sam. She hadn't really thought of the man as a potential husband because of how quiet he was, but now that she understood, she realized he was very handsome. She was certain he'd dance with her if she only asked him to. If she'd been smarter, she'd have danced with him on a Saturday night while they were on the trail. Instead, she'd sat back and watched others dance. Maybe it would work out with Sam and maybe it wouldn't, but she had a feeling Henri and Emma would help her until she found the man of her fantasies. At 5.30, she put supper on the table for her pa. Then she removed her apron and hung it on the hook beside the door. She carefully brushed her hair and put it back up in a stylish bun. One she'd worn her hair in a great deal before they'd headed west, and she'd gotten lazy about her appearance. Is there anything else I can get you, Papa? I'm leaving in a few minutes. Her pa had been waited on by her mother for so many years, he seemed incapable of even getting himself a glass of milk. He shook his head. No, you just go and have a good time. She nodded. Her pa hadn't been quite the same since Ma had died, and she knew he needed his time alone. Getting on with life after her, Ma was gone wasn't easy for either one of them. She heard a buggy pull up at quarter till six on the dot. He was punctual. That would go in the plus column. She opened the door, deliberately forgetting her bonnet. She'd never been one to wear hats much despite what her mother had always told her she must do. Ma had said over and over she'd look like an Indian if she didn't wear her hat. Fiona was careful to walk slowly toward the wagon Sam had driven to fetch her. She was halfway to the wagon when he jumped down and handed her a bouquet of beautiful, white flowers. Oh, thank you, Mr. Appleby. Let me put these in water, and I forgot the cake I baked for supper this evening. Come in. Sam nodded, not saying anything, but he smiled at her in a way that made her wonder if she was someone he was thinking about courting seriously. Pa, you remember Sam Appleby? Pa stood up and shook hands with the younger man. Good to see you, Sam. I hope you won't keep my girl out too late. Sam shook his head. No, sir. I'll make sure she's home by nine at the latest. I have to work in the morning anyway. Thank you. I hope you have a lovely time. Sam smiled. I'm certain if I'm with Fiona, the night will be perfect. As soon as the words were out of his mouth, he wanted to kick himself. Would it scare Fiona away if she realized how very much he cared for her already? Fiona picked up the cake, a bit embarrassed, but very flattered by what Sam had said. He was actually talking. Henri and Emma must be right that he couldn't get a word in around Bastion. I'm ready. The flowers really brighten up the room. I think so too. He looked at her carrying the cake pan. Let me carry that for you. Fiona hadn't expected Sam to be such a gentleman. When they got to the wagon, he put the cake on the seat and gave her a hand to help her up into the wagon. When she was seated, she picked up the cake to hold it while they drove up the hill. How do you like Clover Creek now that we've been here a while? The whole community had settled there in October, so it had been about six months. I love it here, he answered honestly. I'm ranching with my father and brothers, and we're building Pa's house this summer. 
I'll stay in the cabin I've been sharing with Bastion. Well, that's good. How do you like building the house for your pa? He shrugged. I enjoy building things. Pa wants a house like Ma always dreamed of. I understand, Fiona said softly. I lost my ma shortly after you lost yours. She was the first fatality of our community. He transferred both leads to his left hand and covered her hand with his right. I'm so sorry for your loss. Thank you. It's been strange not having her there, but we're managing. Fiona felt a pang as she realized that her mother wouldn't be there for her wedding day. She hadn't thought of that before. This hill is much steeper than I remember. Fiona said. I don't think I've ever been up it. It is steep. But we have the best view in all the valley. Sam loved where they were located within the valley. The town was growing at the bottom of the hill, and he was living at the top where they could look out over everything. I'm sure you do. I can't wait to see it. Too bad the sun has already set. He nodded. The sunrises are truly amazing. We can look over and see the next mountain range with the sun rising behind it. Oh, I would love that view so much. You could see it every day if we got married, he said. He wanted to bite off his tongue after hearing the words come out of his mouth. I'm sorry, Miss Jefferson. I shouldn't have said that. Fiona looked at him for the first time then. She really looked at him. He was a serious man, which was very unlike his younger brother. But he was kind. She could see that by looking at his horses. Even driving up the steep hill often, she could see no signs of a whip being used on them. Please, call me Fiona. At the end of the evening, if you still think you want to marry me, we'll talk. She was surprised that she was so willing to marry this man when she'd been set against it before. I didn't mean to blurt it out like that, he said, extremely embarrassed. I know there's a right way to talk to ladies and a wrong way, but, I must confess, you've been on my mind the entire trip. I wanted to ask you to dance every week, but I'm a terrible dancer. Really? Fiona asked. He was a surprise to her, now that he was actually speaking in her presence. Really? And I will ask your pa for permission to marry you before I ask you again. I shouldn't have done that. Fiona took a deep breath. I think you might be the man I want to spend the rest of my life with. But yes, asking pa first would be the right way to do things. He pulled up in front of a small cabin. Here we are. Jared and Emma's place. He jumped down and walked around to help her down. Instead of taking her hand, he lifted her out of the wagon and carefully set her on the ground. Get the cake, he reminded her. Emma opened the door right away, and Fiona thanked her for the invitation. I brought cake. She was nervous now that she was around other people with Sam. Alone with him, she'd felt just fine. Come in. Emma said. Supper is ready. I just need to serve it. Sam asked, have you already taken some to Pa and Bastion? If not, I'd be happy to walk it over if Fiona would agree to accompany me. I'd be happy to, Fiona said softly. Emma handed him a plate, two loaves of bread, and a bowl of potatoes. Fiona said, let me take the bread. We'll be back in a minute, Sam said as they headed right back out the door. It gets so cold here at night, but I love the peacefulness of it. She smiled. I like the idea of taking moonlit walks. Good. Then we'll do that the first chance we get. He paused for a moment. I would like to court you, Fiona. Would that be acceptable? Oh, yes, she said, falling for the man a little more with every minute they spent together. She couldn't believe that she dismissed him as too quiet. Good. Short courtship all right with you? I feel like I'd like to jump right into marriage with you. Fiona smiled. If you're the man I think you are, I'd get married next weekend if you wanted. He wanted to marry her that night, but he knew better. 
They needed to talk at least a little before they decided to marry. I don't want to rush you too much. If it were all up to me, we'd be banging on Pastor Jed's door right now. Fiona laughed. We've never even kissed. Do you want me to kiss you? Sam was surprised she'd said that. He didn't think women thought about kissing and other things. After we drop the food off, Fiona said. We need to see if we're compatible, don't we? Yes, but kissing already? Are you sure? I love the idea, but I don't expect you to. Fiona laughed. I'm not exactly shy. And I think you're special. If we're talking about marriage, we should kiss. It's important. She hoped she wasn't being too forward, but she wanted to marry him, and it seemed that he was interested as well. But she wouldn't marry a man she wasn't compatible with. To get twelve children they had to be together at least twelve times. That was a lot of times doing something you didn't want to do. No, they needed to kiss. They dropped off the food to Sam's father and brother, and true to form, Bastion said, Oh. I should have known it was Fiona Jefferson. You never would have accepted the invitation otherwise. Sam looked at his brother and said, Shut up, Bastion. With that, he offered his arm to Fiona, and the two of them walked away. Fiona was impressed. She'd assumed Sam let Bastion walk all over him, but it obviously wasn't the case. The man was much different than she'd assumed he would be. When they were halfway between the two cabins, Sam stopped walking. Are you sure? he asked. This is the place because we can't be seen through windows of either house. Fiona smiled, taking a step closer to Sam. I'm certain. Sam put his hands at her waist, because he knew if they were given the chance, they would roam all over her body of their own volition. Then he slowly lowered his head until their lips met, and he felt his body come alive, wanting to be part of this woman so badly, he was afraid it would never calm again. Fiona felt his lips against hers and sighed happily. He was a good man, and he cared for her. She wound her arms around his neck and gave herself over to the kiss. She felt a rush of passion through her body, centering between her legs. He was definitely the man she wanted to marry if she based things only on that one kiss. Finally, Sam broke the kiss, knowing if he didn't, he would try to push things too far, and that wasn't fair to either of them. He rested his forehead on hers for a moment. Well, he asked. A few more questions, but I think a Saturday wedding could be happening. He breathed a sigh of relief. He'd been certain she wouldn't enjoy his kisses and would refuse to marry him. I'd like that. Ask your questions while we walk. What are your plans for the future? I'll work with my father and brothers to build the best ranch on this side of the Mississippi. We'll share whatever profits we decide to take and not put right back into the business. We won't be rich, and we'll both have to work hard. But we won't starve either. She nodded. Do you plan to build a house for yourself? This summer, I'm pledged to building a house for Pa. Then next summer for Jared and Emma. The next year, I would build a house. Fiona sighed. I suppose that will work. I can last two more years in a log cabin. I'm sorry. But I promised, Sam said. We can wait to marry until after I build a house for us. No, that's fine. I'm just glad you have a plan to do it, even if it's not for two years. Maybe we could add on a kitchen to the cabin I share with Bastion and kick him out. Then you could have a stove and a real kitchen, which should make living in a cabin easier for you. She nodded. That would help a great deal. Maybe a wood floor? I can work on that in the evenings, he said as they arrived back at Jared's house. We'll talk more on the drive back to your pa's place. We'll drive through the town three times if we need to. I would like that. He opened the door to his brother's house and found everyone waiting for them. Sorry, we had some things we wanted to discuss along the way. We didn't mean to make everyone late for supper, Sam said. It's fine. 
Henri and Emma said at the same time. They looked at each other and laughed. Sam knew a scheme when he saw it. His sister and sister-in-law were determined to marry him off. God bless them both. Supper was good, and they entertained each other with funny stories from the trail. I'll never forget how little Edna Blue danced. Everyone would stare and do their best to avoid her, but her spinning with her arms raised to the heavens, well, I thought it was hilarious. Emma said. Fiona nodded. She was a character all right. And did anyone ever figure out why she always had a peppermint stick in her bosom? I asked once, Omri said. She told me it was for the children when they cried. And then she plucked it out of her bosom, sucked on it, and offered it to me, so I could suck on it as well. That had everyone laughing. She was different, wasn't she? She was. She talked about an older brother who stayed back east with his wife. I never quite knew what to think of her, Fiona said. No one could. I think that's why we all remember her so fondly. She did her own thing, and she didn't care who saw it. Chapter 3 After supper, Fiona helped Emma with the dishes, and then they all sat around playing charades. They had to sit on the kitchen chairs, because there were no others, but that didn't bother anyone. They played women against the men, and Fiona and the other ladies won. She may have been a tad bit too competitive, but she did her best at all things including games. After the game, Sam consulted his watch and saw that it was already after eight. He knew there was more talking to do before he dropped her off, so he stood. I promised Mr. Jefferson that Fiona wouldn't be out too late, so I need to take her home. Fiona hugged Emma. Thank you so much for inviting me. I had a wonderful time. Emma smiled. I'm glad. And I hope tonight proves to be successful. I think it already has, Fiona whispered back. We should all do this again sometime, Henri said, grinning at the other two ladies. I'd love to, Sam said, his gaze never leaving Fiona. With her long black hair, she looked almost ethereal to him. He would have to do something special to thank Emma and Henri for inviting him and including Fiona. It had worked better than he'd expected, and he was certain better than the ladies had expected. The whole purpose of the night was to try to match him and Fiona. Of that, there was no doubt in his mind. They got into the wagon, and he said, we have about an hour. Would you like to drive around and talk? Or do you want me to take you straight home? I think you know the answer to that. I'd love to go for a ride and talk, then we'll park somewhere secluded and spark a little. He chuckled. Sounds like the perfect way to spend the next hour. To me too. Fiona took a deep breath. I'm sure you realize that I enjoyed our kiss very much, and I believe you would be the perfect husband for me. A couple more things I want to talk about. Of course. If we're thinking of marrying, there should be no secrets between us. Sam drove slowly down the steep hill, thankful that no wagons had overturned on it as of yet. I want a dozen children. Not eleven, and certainly not thirteen. Twelve. Sam wasn't terribly surprised. She seemed the type to want a great deal of children. I would be amenable to that. She sighed happily. Good and we've discussed houses. Do you think Bastion will be agreeable to moving in with your pa? Sam shrugged. I don't particularly care. I give in to him too often. It's time he did something for me. How long do you think it will take to get the kitchen built? I think the four of us men could have it done by the weekend. Getting you a stove is another matter. I'll have to order one, and it will take a while. Clover Creek isn't exactly on a lot of delivery paths. Didn't I hear that the Jensens were thinking of opening a store? He would still do his blacksmith work, but they would have a mercantile as well. If that happens, it may be as easy as driving down the hill. I'll talk to Herbert tomorrow and see if he's really planning to do that. I've heard the rumor as well, but I haven't spoken with him directly. 
It may just be gossip. Fiona nodded. It's funny to me that we have such a tight-knit community, and we still have so much gossip. That's true. Any other questions for me? I'm certain to come up with at least a thousand more, but for now, I don't have anything I can think of. I want to marry you, Sam. Sam smiled. I'd like that as well. I'll ask your father, and we'll see what he thinks of the idea. Oh, please. He's been telling me to get married for years. He's going to be thrilled. Years? Sam asked. How old are you? Nineteen. But he and my mom married at fourteen, so he thought I should as well. I told him that wasn't old enough to take on the responsibilities of marriage, but he doesn't agree. No, Pa is going to be very happy. She looked at him by the light of the full moon. And you? How old are you? Twenty-three, he told her. Is that too old for you? Fiona laughed. I worried you were too quiet for me, but I guess I've only seen you when Bastion was around. Sam shook his head. I stopped trying to compete with him years ago. He pulled off into a quiet field and turned to her. I think there was some talking about sparking? She laughed moving closer to him on the wagon seat. When you talk to Pa, tell him we want to marry on Saturday. He'll be all for it. You in a hurry? He asked. She nodded emphatically. Now that you've kissed me, I am in a hurry. The feelings are very powerful. He chuckled. For me too. She put her arms around his neck as he lowered his head to kiss her. He stroked her back, and without thinking, one of his hands came around to cup her breast. He tried to feel her nipple, but there were too many layers of clothes between them. I need to stop, before I take things too far, he said as he broke the kiss. No reason for you not to be pure on our wedding day. She nodded. None at all. When will I see you again? Fiona knew she shouldn't be quite so eager, but she was determined to see him as often as possible until the wedding. Sam sighed, rubbing a hand across the back of his neck. If I'm going to get the kitchen done by Saturday, I'm going to be working every minute I can. There's no way I'll be able to see you until I fetch you for the wedding. Fiona wanted to pout, but there was no reason to make him feel bad. He was doing what he needed to do to make her happy. All right. Let's go talk to your pa. She rested her head against his shoulder for a moment, then nodded. We'll talk to pa. He drove them straight to her pa's cabin. Your pa is doing well on his house. He is. If he had help, it would go faster, but he'll be done by fall, I think. If he doesn't get too distracted by farming, of course. Sam chuckled. He does have to make a living. He will. Pa is good at that. He pulled the wagon up next to her house, helping her down, and going to the door with her. Here she is, Mr. Jefferson. The older man smiled. You're even a few minutes early. Well, I was hoping to make a good impression. I want to marry your daughter. Mr. Jefferson laughed. Oh, you do, do you? On Saturday. That's really fast. Sam nodded. I know it is, sir, but we've talked and talked, and neither of us want to wait. We will wait till Saturday so I can add a kitchen onto my cabin. He paused. That is if we have your permission, sir. Mr. Jefferson studied him for a moment and then looked at his daughter. How do you feel about this, Fiona? Fiona smiled. He's the man I've been waiting for, Pa. Then you have my blessing. Saturday morning, he asked. Yes, sir. Sam didn't want to contain his excitement at the idea of marrying Fiona. He had been pining for her for a very long time. I'll come by for her around nine, if that works for you both. Sounds perfect, Fiona said. That is just fine, Mr. Jefferson said. I didn't think when you left tonight, you'd be coming home with that kind of news, 
but I can't say I'm disappointed. I thought you should have married years ago. Sam said, it's late. I need to get home so I can put in a long day tomorrow. I'm hoping my younger brother will help me knock out a wall so we can add the kitchen into the cabin. He squeezed Fiona's hand as he turned to leave. Nine on Saturday morning. Fiona nodded. I'll be ready. On the way home, all Sam could think about was how much he'd longed to have Fiona notice him. And now they were going to be married in just a few days. Fiona wasn't a typical shy bride either. She was very willing to kiss him and move closer. She was his dream bride, and it was all happening in just a few days. When he got home to the cabin he shared with Bastion, he saw that Bastion was still up, which wasn't unusual. Bastion didn't sleep a lot, and Sam had never been sure why. He just seemed to have more energy than most people. When he drank coffee, which had been constantly for an entire year, he paced and talked fast. It tended to be too much for Sam. Once he'd put the horses in the barn and rubbed them down, he walked into the cabin. Bastion, we need to talk. About what? I'm getting married on Saturday. Bastion's eyes widened. To Fiona Jefferson? Yes. She's the woman I've been looking for. But, where will you live? Bastion asked. Sam looked at his younger brother for a moment, before responding. Here. You can live with Pa until we have time to build you another cabin. But I don't want to live with Pa. Sam couldn't help but grow exasperated with his brother. So you think a married couple should live with the husband's father? Bastion sighed. No. I'll move in with Pa. Good. Thank you. Sam looked at his brother for a moment. And I have a favor to ask. Bastion shrugged. What? You want my pillows and mattress too? Not at all, Sam said. I'm hoping you'll help me knock out the far wall and build another room so Fiona can have a kitchen. I can do that. I'm always looking for something fun to do in the evenings. I know you are. I'd like to have it done by Saturday. Bastion nodded. Sounds very possible. Yeah, I'll help. It'll be my wedding present to you and Fiona. Bastion started to pace, which wasn't unusual for him. You know, Fiona is really pretty. I'd thought about asking her to court this summer, so it's a good thing you asked before I did. I know she would have chosen me. Who would choose a boring man like you when they could be married to me? Sam shook his head. Bastion's sense of self-worth was ridiculous, but Sam knew his was too. Just the opposite of Bastion's. I guess I'll have to thank God that I asked first then, won't I? Bastion laughed. You're a good big brother. You know that? Sam shrugged. I try. Now let's talk about the kitchen I want to build. I think a 10 by 5 room would be perfect. I want to get her a stove as soon as I can figure out how to get one here. I mean, I'm glad we're here for the free land, but we're so far from any real civilization. I heard the Jensens were opening a store. Could you order through them? Fiona said the same thing. I'll be talking to Herbert tomorrow, to find out if the rumors are true, or someone was just speaking out of hand. Bastion shrugged. I just know people were talking about it at church yesterday. Well, I'll find out for sure, and then go from there. If I can get one through him, I'll be thrilled. I do not want to have to make the drive all the way to Salt Lake City, and I'm sure that's the nearest city of any real size. I wouldn't want to have to make that drive either. I'm not sure how easy I'd feel driving into an area with polygamists. I don't care who they are. I do not want to have to drive that far. It would take days and days. Sam shrugged. I'm going to bed. I'm going to have an extremely busy week. Bastion nodded. All right. You do that. I think I'll go visit the barn for a bit and make sure all the animals are all right. Sam didn't say anything to that. 
It was quite obvious Bastion just needed something to do while he was awake, and the rest of the world slept. The animals were all fine. They always were. As Bastion headed out to the barn, Sam changed into his nightshirt and climbed into bed. He had left one lamp on so Bastion could see when he arrived home, whenever that happened to be. Hopefully he wouldn't stay out all night, but it had happened before, and Sam was sure it would happen again. As he closed his eyes, he said a prayer, thanking God for making it so easy for him to speak with Fiona, and thanking him for her returning his feelings. Well, he was in love with her, but he had no idea how she really felt. He would have to be satisfied with her agreeing to spend the rest of her life with him. He lay in bed awake for a good long while, thinking about his sweet Fiona. He prayed that the work on the cabin would go smoothly, and that the week would go quickly. He was glad the engagement was only a week long. If it was more than that, he would quietly go insane. How he looked forward to the time when he would share his bed with the beautiful Fiona Jefferson, soon to be Fiona Appleby. Asterisk. Fiona lay in bed staring at the ceiling. She was getting married to a man who wanted to have twelve children as she did. Sam was everything she'd hoped for in a husband. He was sweet, romantic, and he made her nether regions quiver. She smiled to herself, thinking that it was good the engagement would be short. She didn't think she could kiss Sam often and not end up doing things she shouldn't before marriage. He did have that effect on her after all. Just six nights, and they would be married. She had no hope of making a dress so quickly, so she would wear her Sunday dress. Perhaps she could take the time to embroider something on the white collar, before Saturday. It was hard to sleep when she was so very happy about spending the rest of her life with Sam Appleby. She'd have to practice writing her new name. Mrs. Sam Appleby. Fiona Appleby. Hopeful Bride. Chapter 4 Sam told his father and Jared the following morning that he was going to be getting married on Saturday. Jared grinned at him. I thought we might see that coming. Fiona is a really sweet girl. Bastion frowned. I have to move in with you, Pa, so Sam and Fiona can have their privacy. And Sam is going to knock out one wall to add a kitchen onto the cabin. Sam nodded. It's easier than trying to get a house built by winter. All of us were cramped all winter, and I don't blame her for wanting a kitchen she can really cook in. Pa tilted his head to one side, thinking about it. How about this? I think Emma deserves a nice kitchen as well. Why don't we knock out the wall and build Fiona's kitchen this week and Emma's kitchen next week? It won't hurt us to take a few days off from working on my house. Sam smiled. Thanks, Pa. I would really love that. Let's get the chores done, and we can get to work right away. Maybe we could finish both kitchens this week. We'll build fences next week. Pa seemed genuinely happy Sam was marrying, which thrilled Sam. He was often lost among his more boisterous siblings. It took the men three days to finish the kitchen. Now you need a stove, Pa said. Have you thought about where you'll get one? Sam frowned. I meant to go into town on Monday to talk to Herbert Jensen. There are rumors he's building a store beside his blacksmith shop, but I don't know if they're true or not. He sighed. I still need to talk to Pastor Jed as well. Getting married sure is keeping me from my work. Paul laughed. You'll see soon enough that she's worth it. He took his hat off and hit his leg with it. Go on and talk to the pastor and blacksmith. We'll get supper heated up and wait for you to eat so Bastion doesn't eat your share as well as his own. Bastion would never do that. Sam said, walking toward the barn to saddle one of the horses. His brother could eat his own weight in food at supper time and be hungry an hour later. Sam was so glad Bastion had finally agreed to move in with Pa and leave the cabin for him and Fiona. Riding his favorite gelding down the hill and into town, Sam went to the blacksmith shop first. When he saw Herbert working on a horseshoe with his hammer, Sam dismounted and called out. 
You got a minute, Herbert? Herbert nodded. I'll be finished with this in a minute. Sam waited while Herbert reshed the horse. When he was finished, he said goodbye to Mr. Sterling and turned to Sam. What can I help you with, Sam? There's a rumor going around town that you're going to open a store. Herbert nodded. That is one rumor I can confirm to be true. Penelope is dying to find a place where she can share her baked goods, and I figured between the two of us, we could manage the store. You looking to buy something? I'm getting married on Saturday, and I'd like to put a stove in as soon as I can. I just built a kitchen off one end of the cabin, so she'll have a good place to cook. Herbert grinned. Congratulations. Who's the lucky lady? Fiona Jefferson. Real nice lady. I know you'll be happy. Herbert walked a short distance to the small building at the back of his shop. I can order a stove for you right away. Do you want to choose one? I have a catalog inside. I wouldn't know which one to choose. Why don't you have Penelope choose a good stove for me? Herbert nodded. I can do that. I don't know how long it'll take to get here. Probably a couple of months unless I find someone in this area who makes them. That's fine. She knows we'll have to wait a little while on the stove. What time is the wedding? Herbert asked. I'd love to be there if you're inviting people. Sam smiled. Around 9.15 unless I come back and tell you differently. I'm on my way to talk to Pastor Jed right now. All right. I'll give you the price for the stove after the wedding. Sounds good. Sam shook hands with Herbert. I look forward to your store. You should have some of the ladies in town sew shirts and things for the bachelors in the area. I think the work would be welcome for many, and I know there are going to be more men than women here soon when we all start hiring ranch hands. That's a good idea. I'll have Penelope ask around if anyone would like to do that. I could make a small profit, but the women could do well for themselves. All right. I'll see you Saturday, Sam said as he walked back to his horse. Now he just needed to talk to the pastor and see if he could perform the wedding Saturday morning. He rode up to the church, which was doubling as a pastorage for Pastor Jed and his wife Hannah. And their little one. Sam couldn't remember if the baby was a boy or girl, but he didn't think Pastor Jed would hold that against him. He knocked on the door around back, knowing that's where the couple lived, and waited until Jed opened the door. What can I help you with, Sam? Do you want to come in for supper? Sam smiled, but shook his head. No, my father and brother are waiting on me. I just came by real quick to see if you'd be willing to perform a wedding ceremony this Saturday. Around quarter after nine maybe? Jed's smile was swift in coming. Who are you marrying? Fiona Jefferson. Every time Sam told someone he was marrying Fiona, he felt his chest fill with pride. She's a good one, all right. Pastor Jed said. We'll plan on being ready for you around nine so any time after that. Thanks, Pastor. Sam shook Jed's hand and walked back to his horse. All was settled now. Perhaps he could even get away and see Fiona soon. He was itching to visit her after not seeing her all week. Sam went home and had supper with his father and brother and immediately left after supper to go and visit Fiona. How could he not? He needed to tell her that her kitchen was built and that he'd talked to Herbert about ordering a stove. He just rode his horse down the hill again instead of hitching up the wagon and driving down. When he got to her house, he knocked tentatively on the door, half afraid she'd decided to call off the wedding. Fiona went to the door, drying her hands on her apron. Sam. I wasn't expecting you. She wanted to run to a mirror so she could see if she looked disheveled, but then she realized Sam had seen her at her worst while they were on the trail. A hair out of place wasn't about to scare him away. I know. I hope it's okay that I came without warning. I wanted to let you know your kitchen is finished, and I talked to Herbert Jensen about ordering me a stove. 
he really is opening a store here in town. I cannot wait to be able to just drive into town to get necessities. Fiona smiled and called over her shoulder, I'm going for a walk with Sam, Pa. She removed the apron and hung it on the hook by the door and stepped outside with him. Do you have time for a short walk? Sure do. Tomorrow we're starting the same process for Emma, and she'll get a kitchen too. Wonderful. I know all of you live on the hill, but how close to our cabin is Emma's? It's back a ways. Five-minute walk maybe? Are you thinking about visiting Emma often? Oh, yes. I can only do so much baking, cooking, and cleaning. I'll need to be with others at times. Just let Emma know before you go. She spends a lot of time with Henri at her place. No problem. I'll be sure to let them know. Sam took her hand and they walked away from the house and toward a copse of trees. As soon as they were out of view of the cabin, she turned to Sam and pulled his head down for a kiss. He felt just as greedy for her touch as she did for his. His arms wrapped around her, and his hands moved over her back. He used all the restraint he had not to touch her in inappropriate places as he wanted. Finally, she broke off the kiss. Saturday feels like it's forever away. He nodded. I know it does. I don't want to wait that long, but Pastor Jed is expecting us shortly after nine on Saturday morning. Herbert said he and Penelope will be there as well. It doesn't make sense to change it, but I do want to touch you a lot more than just a few moments out of view of everyone gives us. Fiona sighed. And it's only three more days. We can wait three more days, right? He chuckled, thrilled that she was enjoying that side of their relationship as much as he was. If I try really hard, I might be able to wait that long. I close my eyes, and your face is there. I go to bed, and I think about sharing it with you. I'm making myself crazy. Fiona smiled. Good. Because I'm making myself crazy as well, and misery does love company. He leaned down and kissed her once more. I want to be heading up the hill before it gets dark, but first tell me what you've done this week. I wanted to make a new dress for our wedding, but I had no fabric to make it from and little time to work on it. So instead, I'm embroidering on the collar of my Sunday dress, and I think it'll be fine. He smiled at that. All right. That sounds fun. She nodded. And I'm writing down simple receipts for Pa to make on his own after we marry. I worry about what he will and won't be eating. I don't think he's ever cooked a meal in his life, so I'm making the instructions simple. That's good. And if you need to continue cooking for him, I wouldn't say a word against it. Henri and Emma have been taking turns cooking for us since before winter set in. I may talk to him about that. It's hard not to worry. I could come down on occasion and help with the house he's building as well. Do you think he'd like that? Fiona nodded emphatically. I know he would. He's trying to do it all alone, but he's jealous of the other men who help each other. I'll offer then. Some men would feel like a man offering to help them build was saying they couldn't do it themselves. Not Pa. He'd just be happy for the offer. Sam noticed the sky was turning pink, and he turned back toward the cabin. It's starting to get dark, and I feel safer not going up and down that steep hill late at night. But you did for me on Sunday. He laughed. You haven't noticed yet that I'll do anything for you? Anything at all? She smiled. I like that. I'll hold you to it. Do you know if there are any widows around who your pa might be interested in? Or my pa? Not really. Most of the widows married while we were still on the trail. There may be someone I'm not thinking about, but no one is coming to mind. I'll ask Hannah next chance I get. Hannah Scott? Yes, as the pastor's wife, she knows everyone around. I didn't notice anyone suitable at the quilt circle this afternoon. You do the quilt circle? he asked. She nodded. 
every week. It's the only time I get to see the other women except on Sundays. Housekeeping is very lonely work. Emma and Henri say the same thing. That's why they end up at Henry's almost daily. They enjoy one another's company for certain. Well, hopefully I can get in on that. Do you think they'll accept me right away? Fiona asked. I don't think there's any possibility they won't accept you. They wouldn't have tried to match us up if they didn't like you. Fiona grinned. You knew? It wasn't very well concealed if I wasn't supposed to know, he told her. My first clue was that I was asked to pick you up for supper. Emma would have sent Jared if she hadn't wanted the two of us to get together. She never asks me for anything. I thought we were being subtle. Sam laughed. You were in on it? She nodded. I was. Does that bother you? No, it makes me feel like I'm someone special if Fiona Jefferson wanted to spend time with me and manipulated things to make it happen. I'm glad you see it that way. I don't want you to think I was doing anything underhanded. I could never think that. They stopped in front of the cabin. I don't want to say goodnight, but I must. Work comes early. I wish I could get by with little sleep as Bastion does. Bastion doesn't sleep? Sam shook his head. He's odd that way. He just has so much energy. Enough for three men. I'm marrying the right brother, Fiona told him. That would make me crazy. Try sharing a room with him. I'm glad he's agreed to move in with Pa. Of course, I didn't really give him a choice, but he's not going kicking and screaming. Sam leaned down and kissed her cheek, mindful of the fact her father could be watching. I'll see you at nine on Saturday morning. Thanks for the surprise visit. I've been missing you. As Sam drove home, he was amazed at how warm and willing she was in his arms. It made it harder to wait, of course, but it also made him feel like he was someone she could love. He hoped he was anyway. After putting the horse up for the night, he walked into the cabin to find Bastion pacing back and forth. Everything all right? he asked. Bastion nodded. Just thinking about moving in with Pa. We need to get that house finished soon. That cabin is not big enough for me and Pa. We'll kill each other. Just make certain you sleep in the loft, Sam told his brother. Then you won't be tripping over each other. He knew the real reason Bastion didn't want to move in with Pa though. Pa didn't put up with Bastion's nonsense. Sam thought that was a very good thing. Chapter 5 On Friday, Emma and Henri invaded the cabin Sam shared with Bastion. What are you doing here? Bastion asked. We're going to make this house livable for Fiona. It needs to be spotless before she comes, Emma replied. Bastion mumbled something about no one caring if he lived in filth as he left the cabin, leaving Sam shaking his head. Thank you for caring enough to help out. You chose the right day too. I'm going to make Bastion sleep at Paws tonight, so everything will stay clean. Henri smiled, standing on tiptoe and kissing her brother's cheek. You're going to be a good husband to Fiona. Bastion nodded. I'm sure going to try. Never having been a husband, he was sure he wouldn't be perfect at it, but he would enjoy it, nonetheless. You've got a special lady for your bride, Emma said. I'm glad all of us are getting along so well. We'll have to find a wife for Bastion eventually, but I just don't think he's ready for marriage. Whatever he thinks falls off his tongue, and women don't particularly like that. Sam nodded. I know. But I'm sure someone in town will be willing to marry him. Eventually. Henri waved her hand toward the door. Go work. We'll make sure the sheets are washed and put back on the bed as well as getting all your clothes washed. Fiona doesn't have to know how hard her job will be the first time she walks in here. Thank you both. With that, Sam left to go to his paws for breakfast. They usually went to work a bit earlier in the day, but they'd had so many long nights that week, 
they'd all agreed to meet up an hour later than usual. Sam joined his father and brothers. You're here for breakfast? Sam asked, surprised to see Jared. Jared nodded. Emma sent me over with some French toast for breakfast. She ate before I was even awake and told me to eat with you, too, so she could start work on the cabin. I appreciate your sacrifice. Jared laughed. No sacrifice. I'm just glad there's a way she can help. Asterisk. Fiona finished the flowers on the collar of her dress early in the day on Friday. Then she looked around the cabin for something to keep her busy. She'd just done up all the laundry on Wednesday, but she decided to wash it all again. Better to have it clean and not have to come back to wash her father's things in a few days. She really wished there was someone to help her father, but she had a feeling she'd have to come down at least three times a week to keep his cabin clean and make meals for him. She really needed to keep her eyes out for a wife for Pa. Even if they were only married so she could take care of him. Surely there would be someone in town. By the end of the day, Fiona had worked herself into exhaustion, cleaning the entire cabin, even when it didn't need to be done. She carefully packed all of her things into her hope chest and used her legs to push it to the door, so it would be ready when Sam came to fetch her the following morning. After supper, Fiona smiled at her pa this is my last night in your house. I guess it is. I'll come back and keep your laundry up and make sure you have meals. He shook his head. No, I don't think so. I'm going to go to the boarding house for my meals. I've already talked to Mrs. Pruitt. So I'll just come once per week to clean and do your laundry, Fiona said, happy her father had made arrangements for his meals. That sounds good. If it's too much, I'm sure I can find someone willing to come and clean and do my laundry once per week. Pa shrugged. I'm going to do fine. Don't worry about me. Of course, I'm going to worry about you, knowing that you're here alone. I feel bad that I'm leaving you, but I'm ready to marry Sam. You're doing nothing wrong. You need to get on with your life. I'll miss you just as I miss your ma, but I will manage just fine on my own. Fiona nodded. All right, Pa. She stood up to go to bed. I'm going to sleep. I worked myself hard today, because I'm so excited about tomorrow, and I needed to burn off some of my energy. He's a fine man, Fiona. I'm proud of you. Fiona leaned down and kissed her father's mostly bald head. I do love you, Papa. As she climbed the ladder into the loft, she thought about how lonely her pa would be without her. But he said he'd be fine. She'd check on him when she could, but he would keep busy with his work. She fell asleep as soon as her head landed on her pillow. All the work she'd done had simply exhausted her. But what better feeling was there than sleeping after working hard all day? Asterisk. Sam arrived the following morning, just a few minutes before nine. He was dressed in his Sunday clothes, ready for the wedding. When he knocked on the door, Fiona said, Can you put my chest into the back of your wagon? Sure can. Sam nodded to the trunk on the floor. This one? Yes, please. All of the things she'd been saving for years were right there and ready for her. She was ready to set up her house, but not as eager for that as she was to be married to Sam. She couldn't figure out why she'd overlooked him as a possible husband for so long. She must have been blind. After getting her trunk situated, he helped her into the wagon. Pa had decided to go by horseback to the church, since there were no ladies needing to travel with him. Sam took her hand and squeezed it. You ready for this? I'm so ready to be your wife, it's ridiculous. I'm excited to spread my things out and make your cabin a home. If there's anything you need me to do, just let me know, he said. I will. I'm not afraid to ask. He picked up the leads and started the short drive to the church. Is your father going to give you away? Or are we not going to be that formal? Yes, he wants to. I told him he's not getting rid of me forever, 
but he just laughed at that. When they arrived at the church, she squeezed his hand once more. I'm going to do my best not to fall down when I walk to you. He laughed. You're much too graceful for that. Besides, I'd just help you up and marry you anyway. She sighed happily. In less than an hour, I'm going to be your wife. I took the day off work, he said. I shouldn't have, but I told Paul last night that I wanted to spend the whole day with you, and he said it was fine. That sounds wonderful. He lifted her down from the wagon and took her hand as they walked toward the church. Do you want to go on a long drive? I don't. I think napping together is at the top of my list of priorities for the day. He grinned. Is that so? Oh, yes. I'll fix us a nice lunch, and then we'll take a nap. She winked at him. Your brother knows not to just come back, right? Sam nodded. He moved to Pa's cabin last night. The cabin is all ours. I'm so glad. Fiona said. I wasn't sure if Bastion would be able to stay away. He seems a little set in his ways. Oh, trust me. He is. Inside the church, there were a great deal more people than Fiona had expected. It looked like the whole town had come out to watch them get married. Sam hurried to the front of the church, and Fiona took her father's arm. There was no music to walk down the aisle to, but Fiona didn't mind. Her pa was there, and all of her friends were there. She couldn't have asked for more. As she walked with her father, her eyes were glued to Sam and his to her. Everyone was quiet as they watched her take small steps toward her future husband. She couldn't believe she was about to be Sam's wife. But yet, it seemed as if it had been a year since they'd agreed to marry less than a week before. When Pa put her hand into Sam's, she felt tears stinging the back of her eyes. Her mother should be there with them, crying about her baby getting married. Fiona could only hope her mother was looking down on them. The ceremony only took about 15 minutes. Pastor Jed had performed so many weddings that he had them down to the shortest wedding Fiona had ever seen. And she was glad. It felt odd to be in front of their whole community. You may now kiss the bride, Pastor Jed said. Sam looked embarrassed, but he leaned down and brushed her lips with his. She wanted to wrap her arms around his neck and pull him back down for one of the deeper kisses they'd shared, but they were in a church, and she didn't want to be improper. Everyone looked excited when they turned around and faced the congregation. Henri was crying, but she seemed to be the only one. They stopped and talked to people, thanking them for coming to the wedding. Fiona was surprised when Hannah said, We have refreshments waiting in the quilting room. Fiona nodded, knowing they had to go. No matter how much they wanted to get their hands on each other, if people had taken the time and effort to make food for their wedding, then they should be there. In the quilting room, Fiona was stunned. It wasn't just simple refreshments. Why it was a big meal. It looked like everyone had contributed a dish, and there was a woman behind each dish ready to serve. Sam and Fiona went through the line first, and each of them filled their plate. Someone had set tables all around the room, so Fiona chose one and sat there, and Sam followed suit. Did you know they were doing this? she asked him. He shook his head. No, I didn't, but I think it's very kind. She nodded. I wanted to be alone with you, but I will not be rude to my friends. He nodded, taking her hand in his. I feel the same way. Her father and his joined them at their table. Were you surprised? Mr. Appleby asked. Fiona nodded. Who put this together? Henri. She and Emma went to all the neighbors' houses and told them about the wedding and asked what they could bring. They were both really excited to surprise you. It's appreciated, Fiona said, and she meant it. The outpouring of love from the community only made her feel loved. I'm just glad it worked out and you didn't know it was coming. I don't know why Henri thought it needed to be a secret, but she did. Her pa just smiled. 
Did you know about this, Pa? Fiona asked. He nodded. I knew. I even donated the pig that was roasted. Knowing how much his livestock meant to his future, Fiona was overwhelmed. Thank you, Pa. Many people stopped at their table to speak with them while they ate. Fiona felt like the whole town was celebrating her and Sam. Sam said little, but Fiona spoke to everyone. After they'd eaten, some presents went onto the table in front of them. Should we open them now? Fiona asked, unsure what to do. Yes, please, Hannah Scott said from the table next to theirs. The first package was huge and on the outside it said, to Fiona and Sam from the quilting circle. Fiona was shocked. They'd done a few quilts together, but she'd never thought to be the recipient of one. When she opened it, she saw that it was done in pink and purple. She remembered working on the quilt, and it had been her favorite. There were tears in her eyes as she looked around at the friends she'd made while quilting. Thank you all. A note from Herbert and Penelope Jensen said their stove had been ordered, and they would receive a 10% discount on it. Hannah and Pastor Jed gave them a nice tablecloth with tatted lace around the outside. They were even given two rocking chairs by Sarah and Elmer King. The sheer amount of gifts overwhelmed Fiona, and she knew she had to make some sort of speech because Sam certainly wasn't going to do it. After opening each gift, she stood. Thank you all for the lovely gifts. I'm pleased to have each and every one. Thank you for this lunch, which was completely unexpected. All of you have made my day more special. Everyone applauded after her little speech, and Sam gave her a look of sheer pride. Several men loaded all of the gifts into the back of Sam's wagon. Sam stood, took Fiona's hand, and pulled her to her feet. I want to echo the thanks my wife expressed. You have truly made us feel as if we are special in your eyes. And now, I'm going to take Fiona home and let her see her new cabin. He raised his hand in a wave. As they drove, he kept glancing at her as if he couldn't believe she was sitting beside him. Finally after the fifth glance, she asked, You keep looking at me like I'm about to disappear. He grinned. I am. I just didn't believe this was really going to happen, but there you are, sitting beside me with a smile on your face as if you really are happy to be married to me. I really am happy to be married to you, Sam. I wouldn't have agreed otherwise. I can't wait to see our new home and get that nap. He chuckled. We'll nap together, and all will be right with the world. Were you as surprised as I was about the party and the gifts? I was. When Henri and Roy got married there was nothing. Same with Jared and Emma. I think now that we've been here for a bit, people are finding time to do what they want to do, and it's marvelous. I mean, we still all have to work hard, but it seems as if there's an end in sight, if you know what I mean. I do. I very much do.